Good day everyone. You are welcome to this segment of market structure. In the last segment, we were able to identify five structures of market. However, in this segment, we'll be looking at one of the two extremes of the market structure, which is the perfect competitive market. Precisely, we will examine the graphical illustration of price in perfect competitive industry and perfect competitive firm. Enjoy as we proceed. Thank you. Market. As established in the last class, in a perfect competitive market, we have many buyers and many sellers of similar and non-differentiated products. From this statement, it is clear that none of the buyer can actually differentiate a product from the other. How do we determine price in this market? Knowing fully well that none of the buyer can differentiate a product from the other. As such, none of the seller can influence market price. What determines market price in a perfect competitive industry is the forces of demand and supply. Forces of demand and supply determines market price. These are price axes, quantity axes. So, the forces of demand and supply determines market price in a perfect competitive industry. And this price, the price in the industry is passed across to other firms in the industry. Let us assume we have firm one Firm 2 up to Firm N. Let us assume these are the firms in the industry because none of them can actually influence price. They all accept price from the industry and this is the market determined price. As such, if this is equilibrium price 1, this will be the price for firm 1, price for firm 2, price for firm 3. They all sell at the same price, as none of them can actually influence market price. How do we achieve increase in price for each of the firm? To attain increase in price for each of the firm in the industry, there must be a leftward shift of the supply curve or a rightward shift of the demand curve. For instance, if there is a leftward shift of the supply curve from SO to S1, we have new equilibrium point. Let's call this equilibrium point A, this equilibrium point B. With a leftward shift of the supply curve, there is new equilibrium point. And this will give new equilibrium price. We can call that equilibrium price 2. And the price will be passed across to all the firms. Price 1, so price 2, price 2, price 2. Also, if there is a rightward shift of the demand curve, before that, what could lead to a leftward shift of the supply curve? Probably, if there is decrease in labor productivity. For the demand curve, if there is increase in consumer's income, there will be a rightward shift of the demand curve. Then, we have the new equilibrium price, which will be transferred 
to all the firms in the industry accordingly. But for the sake of this class, we will restrict ourselves to the demand curve. As stated earlier, demand, supply. This is our equilibrium price one, supply, demand. How do we achieve price increase for each of the firm in the industry? First, we need to look at factors affecting demand. We have price of the commodity. We have income of the consumer. Price of other commodity. Other commodity may be substitute or complement, taste, and so on. This is our equilibrium point. Equilibrium point A. Because in this industry, None of the firm can actually influence market price, the price of the product. None of the firm can actually influence market price. Then we hold price constant. So how do we achieve price increase for the firms? If there is change in any of these factors, it would affect the demand curve. What we must also know is a favorable factor would shift demand curve to the right. A favorable factor would shift demand curve to the left in the industry. Let us assume increase in consumer's income. Increase in consumer's income will shift demand curve from DO to D1. Increase in consumer's income will shift demand curve from DO to D1, which is a rightward shift. So we have new equilibrium point, which is equilibrium point B. As such, our new equilibrium price is EP2. Let's call this D2. Okay, D1, D1. As such, our new equilibrium price is P2, which we pass across to each of the firm. P2, P2, P2. Therefore, with increase in income in the industry, each of the firms are able to attain price increase because of rightward shift of the demand curve. Also, what we must note is increase in price of substitute will also shift the demand curve to the right. A favorable taste for a product will shift the demand curve to the right. Conversely, if there is decrease in consumer's income, there will be leftward shift of the demand curve to D2. D2. So we have a leftward shift of the demand curve. And this becomes the new equilibrium point, which is point C. We have equilibrium price 3, and the price is passed across to all the firms in the industry. Price 3, price 3, price 3. So, as a result of decrease in consumer's income, there is drop in the market price for each of the firms in the industry. So, 
This is the graphical illustration of price, both in the industry and firm. And what we must know is, for each of the firm, price is determined by the forces of demand and supply in the industry. And all firms in a perfect competitive industry are price takers. They are set price as it comes from the industry. Now, subsequent video, we look at the graphical illustration of price, average revenue, and marginal revenue in the perfect competitive industry. Thank you.